opponents. Um, yeah, and they got the job done, didn't they? I did. Basically, in the end. Individually, who stood out for us? Well, um, Alex Wormsley, the man of the f- infamous forearm now. Two tries, 175 metres, three successful offloads. Mark Percival, a try and 121 metres. Ben Barber, a try, a try, so seven tackle bus, 126 metres. Zeb Taya, a try and 140 metres. Who... Secret, you know, not secretly, but on the sly, after it's probably three or four seven. patchy games where he made a few errors, got back a bit of uh, really good going. Form, yeah. yeah, definitely. Right. Since he started to not try and offload all the time, yeah. basically. And Regan Gregg's 134 meters. Anybody do anything for Salford? Tyrone McCarthy put in a good shift with 41 tackles, and Manny Vatavai 143 meters. Junior Sal 123 meters. Okay, so it's a Friday night then down at the Jungle, a much rotated Castleford Tigers side took on Hull FC and lost 16 points to 48 in front of 7,974. Refereed by Benjamin Thiel. And Tyler Cass fan, we start with. Can't read a lot into this result, but Hull needed the win and were impressive. They were slicker and quicker and executed their plays really well. The forwards were dominant and they made a huge amount of yards after contact. Shaw had terrific speed and step and was a threat throughout. After the 30 game qualifying tournament, the season starts next week. There you go. Okay, Fat Boy Rob says, oh dear, how sad, never mind. Joshua's granddad said, You beat what's in front of you. Apart from a dodgy four minutes at the start of the second half, we were always in control. What's once more world class? Bring on the loiners. AK Steel 69 says, Hull once again performed when it mattered, albeit against a much weakened cast side. Connor were probably secured his place in the semi final starting lineup with a confident free tries. He may well be an absolute wanker on the field, but he's <laughs> our wanker and we love him. In 2007, New Wembley Open, Bex and Owen still played for England, and Hull had their most recent win at Headingley. Hull need to create more history this week that's a uh, that's that's some good perspective there wow yeah. 10 years yeah. Brian Davies says we've wakey out of the top four time to get behind FC and ensure the final four didn't include Leeds Saints and Wigan think the result will have been one of Sorry, I think the result will have been the one that everyone but Wigan fans wanted. The young winger that Cass have signed from London shows the value of teams outside the North. There is plenty of rugby league talent waiting to be found down south and clubs need to invest more in unearthing it. Sarah McKenzie said, yes, Cass had a weekend team, but you can only beat what's in front of you. And we were professional in that. Previous years, we would have either scraped past or screwed it up. What's had a massive game. Great to see Rob, Kelly, Phil and his beard. That's he not his actual beard, not his wife. Yeah. Covering up through and struggle the way. Yeah, it was lovely to see that. We'll talk about that in a second, shall we? Uh, well, we'll talk about it now. It was just nice. Quicker, yeah. It's just nice to see, like, the because these are, you know, three three disparate groups of people that might not have ever come together had it not been for the Super League pod. Um, I'm sure they bonded over their love of rugby league, and, and it was lovely to see all those people in that one photograph together. Oh, yeah, great. Yeah. I really, really it, rewarding. Yeah. I thoroughly enjoyed watching that game. and following it on Twitter and seeing those pictures come through. Rich Langley said, Having rewatched the game, it's hard to express how much we are going to miss Mahe and Gaz. Burrito has some massive boots to fill in 2018. <laughs> Hull march on and we've, uh, with two of a potential four-round knockout series played, here's to two more wins. It was sad... It was sad that... Sorry, what? It was sad to say... That's, it was sad to say goodbye to Wigan, though. It's now a whole Saints Hall final. My prediction for the seventh of October. God, hopefully the all the worst cast, possible outcome. Hopefully all the cast fans, Fat Boy Rob, and the Ty, and all the Tylers included, yes. will be cheering us on. I'm sure there'll be a Tyler FC fan there if uh, I reckon if so. Cass are on. I reckon so, Rich. Well, look, this was um, you know had there been more at stake, this would have been an absolutely tantalising fixture. Um, but Daryl Powell did exactly what I anticipated he would do, and uh, and and switch things up and and protect a couple of people. And and fair play, he's earned the right to do that. Uh, and consequently, we got a bit of a blowout, and Hull came out and very professionally kept their pretty much their starting seventeen going. Yeah, and dispatched this very weak and very much switched around cast side with relative ease. My issue with nothing to see here if you're a cast fan, as far as I'm concerned. My issue with it is more it scuppered the potential entertainment than any objection yeah. from what they chose to do. Um, mm. Yeah, of course it does. But uh, I, I have no problem with that. Wigan benefited from a weakened lead size early in the season yeah. and I don't think Cass were running scared of Wigan no. um, because Wigan, they've dispatched off quite comfortably this year well, unlike Hull and St. Helens who mm. are the teams that got in. So, um, so yeah, that's that bit put to bed. Yes. Um, in terms of performances... 
I'll start with Cass from my perspective because I was a little bit disappointed with not the players that came in, mm. but some of the remain. established players. Mm. Particularly, I felt like Jake Webster and Mike McMeekin weren't putting in full shifts in this game. In well, defense. perhaps not. Perhaps they were. Yeah. Guarding themselves. Yeah, Sonny Lafayette to a slightly lesser extent as well. I thought he wasn't um, at his sparkling best defensively yeah. either. So from that aspect, it made me question the intensity that Cass have been playing at at this stage because they're players that are going to be starting next week and they yeah, have to raise so. their game back up to a level that they maybe haven't been at for yeah. three or four weeks. So, so that's the only question there. Great credit to the youngster on the wing. I mean, you go through... Who, which one's that, sorry? Tio Agodo. Thank you. Um, and you've got, you know, you, you throw in people like Springer and McMeekin um, and you think, you know, there's people, they're looking outside of their bubble yeah. to bring in some talent. They had Channing there for a while, didn't they? Mm-hmm. That Igbenadian guy yeah. who um, isn't fair. at Fev anymore. He, yeah. he was brought up north. There's Matt Cook, who okay, is from up here, but they brought him back from, from mm-hmm. the London side. Yeah. So they've gone like they've that. gone looking around mm. um, to build up the makeup this side. There's Kevin Leroy who was a bit on the scrap heap and maybe you can understand a little bit why sometimes when you see him play he's not pulling up any trees, yeah. but um, interesting to see him used in the middle as a loose forward. I like the look of young Will Mayer off the bench as well. He's a big he's a unit, unit and he? he's He's shown flashes. I just think, obviously, he's a way off the finished article. But if they can mould that into the finished article by the time the business end of next season comes around, what a finished article that'll be! They've got a replacement for Lynch without having to spend big bucks on one. Yeah. Um, in terms of Hull FC, uh, yeah, Connor was really good um, with the ball. I thought Talanoa um, was was very impressive, mm-hmm. and I also, I mean, it's obvious. The, the Taylor and Watts combination up front um, they're, they're just an outstanding combo aren't they and I think what was interesting is in the second half Hull FC were able to rest a few players pull them off the park but still you know find a few tries towards the end Jamie Shaw um, kind of rocks and diamonds game because he had a few drops that if it was other players we might have been hearing about it a bit more on the old social media but yeah then he pulled out like absolutely sparkling things that some of the other players maybe haven't done yeah. in the last 12 months. And and that's why people talk about the class he's got, particularly that long-range try. Uh, was that his first first try um, in the first half? Uh, yeah, did some good stuff as well as some shady uh, defensive and catching work. <laughs> so um, there's lots to be excited about for, for, for Hulk because that was pretty much the best side that they started with yeah um, and it's a dominant display game. away from home in West Yorkshire heading into a semi-final where that is exactly the same situation for them yeah and they looked good didn't they and they, they did ab- look good they absolutely dispatched them okay they weren't playing against a team playing at full tilt but psychologically does have a lot of good ahead of, game, ahead of the game against Leeds and it's another knockout game that they've won they've won every knockout game they've had this year if you look at it that way yeah that's it apart or- from the Wigan game but at that point, they could still rescue their season. It was yeah. still in their hands there to an extent, yeah. Fantastic. What did the stats tell us then? Okay, where are we at? Uh, again, the home side went under 1,000 metres and had less ball, limiting their chances to win. Hull FC were nearly one metre per carry better at making ground for their 395 more metres and 8-3 to three clean break win. They also had an impressive 43% tackle success win for an overall 97% tackle success as a team and a plus 51 difference from Cass on the positive negative impact play numbers that we, we track. Um, that 97% kind of rounds off an impressive Super 8 period defensively mm. uh, in terms of tackle success at the very l- least, if nothing else, yeah. for Hull FC. Similarly, Saints had good tackle success numbers throughout the last seven weeks. Mm -hmm. Much better and much more consistent than Castleford and Leeds' defensive numbers, despite what we'll get to when we do the stand-ins, actually finishing below them in the table. There you go. Individually, who stood out for us? 
Uh, Jake Connor, three tries, six tackle busts, three clean breaks. Jamie Shaw, two tries, one try assist, 11 tackle busts, 154 metres, two clean breaks. Carlos Tuimavave, a uh, try and 104 metres. Liam Watts, 157 metres. Fatuli Tawalanoa, a try assist. Um, that was a really cool play, that play for the Tuimavave try, I thought. A try assist in 140 metres. And for the Tigers, who stood out? Well, young Tio Agodo with three tries and three clean breaks. So good conversion there for his chances, mm-hmm. um, limited as they were. Alex Foster, 44 tackles, and Greg Eden, uh, unfortunately, didn't break the try scoring record, but no. two try assists contributed from fullback. So, showed there's a bit more to his game than just falling over the line That's this it. year. There you go. I think it's a bit unfair to say that Greg Eden, and I know this isn't you, but the, the conception that Greg Eden is just basically well serviced and is not actually all that good is a bit of a stretch in my opinion I think a winger's job is to score tries and he has done that with great great aplomb however so. the platinum edge of Cass <laughs> is, uh, is somewhere where no, he's maybe I could well score, score, maybe I could finish the odd try off on the end of their moves how much they move people out of position with just I'd, just, just flawless execution rather oh, than anything I'd particularly to, clever and nonsensical. I'd pay 200 quid a year to watch you getting smashed in a touch every week. <laughs> I absolutely would. Okay. At the same time, then, down at the John Smiths, it was Huddersfield 12, Leeds Rhinos 36 in front of 6,247, refereed by Scott Michalowskas. Yeah, and Cutthroat Jake said, A wet Friday evening and Burrow and Maguire again roll back the clock. They always seem to revel in the damp conditions at this time of year. And on this form, what are the odds of them bowing out after winning another Leeds Saints grand final? Oh, Lord. Rich Wilkinson says, Now then, lads, a great end to the season for Leeds. Key players are in top form. Mag's proving he's still top draw. Holds are put to the sword with ease. We are ready to push for the title. I fully believe we can be champions in a few weeks. And if we don't, I'll be gutted. But after last year... That shows where the team and the club is at. Any one of the four can still win it, but Cass will fall short without Gale. Well, Gale's back in full training. Mm. So, who knows? Yeah, I think that's. I think Gale will play. Uh, I don't think there's a doubt on that, so no. I'm not really looking into that. No. What What I would say is I don't know a lot about this game. I didn't really see much of... I, I, don't, think I, remember, I don't recall seeing the highlights, to be right. honest. Okay. But from what I do know... Um, just a lot of good performances from all over the pitch. Yeah. But nothing nothing absolutely like startling. And they got a good start mm. because Huddersfield gave them easy possession on a couple of early sets. Um but Watkins had a good game, that's good for Leeds because you need your strike weapons in the backs to kind of all be all be getting hot and you've seen Briscoe have a great game a couple of weeks ago so for Watkins to have a good game now as well kind of helps and Danny Maguire has really been probably well Leeds is player of the Super 8 period yeah. if, if not across the whole board but he's really getting the accolades and everyone's you know every review I've read every report I've read was just it was the Danny Maguire show he, he was the difference between the two sides. Yeah. Oh, he's got he's got the class. He's going to do. Um, what's his role going to be? All car? Is he playing? Yeah, yeah. He's going to be. He's going to be good for all car next season. Is he exactly the sort of player that he coming back in the Super League? I think he's certainly got another year or two in him. Um, so so good luck to him. And it was exactly as Rich said. It was like I'm rolling back the years. Um, watching him and Burrow. Burrow's try was a typical Rob Burrow. Rob Burrow try. Danny Maguire's dummies here, there, and everywhere were working and coming off for him. Um, and Leeds look good. Um, how hard an opposition, how tough and challenging an opposition Huddersfield Giants are at this stage of the season, given their position, I'm not sure. But a win's a win, and maintain that winning habit definitely stands you in good stead. Well, they've been the based on based on wins and you know margin of wins. They've been the best side in these eights because mm. they've. Well, they've topped that mini table, yeah. um, as we'll get to later on. Yeah, OK. Individually then. Oh, sorry, not individually. What did the stats tell us there, Mark? Uh, Leeds were much better at taking their opportunities, as none of the other numbers suggest such a margin as that we saw on the scoreline. Metres were close. Four total metres difference between the sides. 0.3 metres per carry difference. Uh, shared one win each way. And the Giants made more breaks, 10 to 7. Tackle success was close too, within 1% difference. So all those numbers are edge into a slight Giants victory maybe but the Giants did give up an extra error and in a high overall 16 to 15 count and a couple of extra penalties in a low overall 6 to 3 or 6 to 4 count uh, I've read different 
different different stats for that in different places. But anyway, low penalty count. There you go. Okay, individually, who stood out for us? Uh, Danny Maguire, two tries, oh. six tackle busts, three clean breaks. Callum Watkins, a try in 131 metres. Ryan Hall, Dr. Bob will be swooning. Um, a try assist in 139 metres. Mitch Garbutt, 192 metres. 